G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. So after declaring how much I loathe and hate cardio on this very channel, why would I suddenly start jogging every single morning for the last nine days in a row? What place does cardio have in helping us on our weight loss journey? That's what we're going to discuss in this week's episode. Before we get started with this week's content, I just wanted to say if you're joining us for the first time, thank you very much for watching. I release videos every Tuesday, uh, pretty much covering my weight loss journey and all the tips and tricks I pick up along the way about weight loss, health, um, the health industry in general, um, some of the some of the garbage that's been put out there in the market uh, to, to help sell you things. Um, you know, it's pretty much a no BS approach so that if you're like me and have been sitting around talking and thinking about getting started with losing weight for a long, long period of time, hopefully this channel will help motivate you and, and also give you some information to help get you started. Because, you know, in my experience, that first step is, is often the, the, the leap of faith, if you like. It's, like, it's certainly the hardest step. So if you like what you see, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, get notifications every time I release a video, and leave me a comment, I reply to all of them. So on with the show. Um, you know, cardio. So after spending 10 years avoiding cardio whenever possible, all of a sudden I've started jogging every day. So uh, I've been running now for nine days in a row. Um, every morning. I've been sticking to five kilometers each morning uh, with the exception of Wednesday and yesterday where I did a 10k run. So, um, you know, I've hit it pretty hard. And the reason I wanted to do that was really just to adjust my body, uh, get through that initial muscle pain. I've, I've noticed now that when I go for my 5k run, not only is it is it much easier for me to, to, uh, to continue jogging and, and to continue pushing myself, um, but I also find that I don't get leg pain afterwards the next day anymore. So really it was just to push myself through that initial muscle pain, which you expect out of, out of using muscles that you haven't used for a long time. Um, but really this channel isn't so much about what I've been doing and why, it's more about why cardio is important for weight loss. Um, now it's important to remember, this is just another tool in the weight loss toolkit. Ultimately, all you're trying to do is increase your caloric deficit. So, um, you know, by burning more energy while exercising than you would if you were sitting around being sedentary, um, then obviously, you know, if you continue to eat the same amount of energy in, but you're increasing your output, then you create a bigger deficit, which means that you're going to lose weight. The other major benefits from cardio, obviously are cardiovascular, which is your heart and lung pro, um, cycle or lung, heart and lung organs in, in terms of their health. Um, and the other thing is, is in terms of building muscle. So you will be building a, at least initially, if you haven't been running on a regular basis, you were, will initially build some lean muscle tissue in your legs to help pump you further. The harder you push yourself over, over time, the more muscular your legs will become. Now, the reason why that's important for weight loss is the larger um, mass we have of lean muscle, um, the more energy we burn when we're doing nothing. Your body actually uses a lot of energy to keep muscle tissue intact. So um, really, as you're building more lean muscle tissue, you are increasing your energy output just doing nothing. So it, it tends to be a cycle that feeds itself. So not only are you increasing your energy output by exercising, but you're then putting on lean muscle mass, which increases your muscle, sorry, which increases your energy output when you're doing nothing. So, you know, it's obviously extremely beneficial to weight loss. Having said that, like I said before, it is just a tool. Ultimately, diet is still king. It still represents between 60 and 80% of weight loss overall, depending on who you listen to and which, which article you read. Um, but fundamentally, you know, this is just another tool in the toolkit. Uh, and the other thing to note is when I talk about running, it doesn't have to be running. It could be swimming, um, you know, obviously lap swimming. It could be any kind of cardio. Find something that you hate the least. If you're like me and hate cardio, find something you hate the least. The worst, you know, the lesser of all evils that you can find. Try a bunch of different cardiovascular exercises until you find something that you can live with. Now, people have reassured me continuously that if you if you stick to your exercise, you will eventually get to a point where you enjoy it. I'm not at that stage yet. I, you know, my muscle pains have gone. I'm in the first three or four days. Um, 
on, not the first day, but from day two onwards, I couldn't walk down my staircase at home or, you know, I found walking up was painful, walking down was excruciating. Um, but that pain's gone away now and I've continued to run. So it's not because I didn't, you know, I haven't continued to exercise. I've just known my muscles have now adjusted. So you kind of need to push yourself over that initial hump. Um, you know, and I'm hoping if I continue to push myself, then I will eventually get to a point where I actively enjoy it. The other tips I would have for starting cardio, and that's really what the bulk of this episode's about. Um, first of all, have a goal in mind. Um, know what it is you're setting out to do. Now, in my case, I just wanted to get out there each morning and, and cross the starting line. I love that saying. I heard it the other day in a, um, in a coached run of all places, um, a pre-recorded audio that came with the uh, Nike Run Club app that I use to, to track my run. Um, you know, but it's all about setting out to, to cross the starting line. The finish line, I know I'll get to. Um, but, you know, know what your, what your specific goal for getting out there and doing cardio is. Uh, and I don't mean your, your big picture goal with that's, you know, a lot of this content is about big picture. It's about weight loss. It's about increasing caloric deficit. It's about, you know, increasing lean. That's big picture stuff. Small picture stuff is what are you going to do today on your jog? So for me, when I get out there, my goal is run or jog as much of the course as I can, because, you know, I'll be honest, five kilometers, I cannot jog continuously for five Ks far from it. What I will say though, is this morning, day nine, I can jog considerably more of that course than I could on day one or two. So, you know, and the other thing is on, I think it was Friday. Um, I've been on holidays this week. I go back to work on uh, Monday, which is tomorrow. Um, you know, I've, I've, I also took a day off. And what I mean is I still got out there and I still went on my five kilometers, but I forced myself to stick to a fast walking pace, just to give my muscles a bit of time to recover, just to give my energy levels a bit of a time to recover. So, you know, know what you're setting out to do before you, you before you walk out that door. So um, for me, most days, my plan is to whittle down the amount of time it takes me to do a full circuit. So I think, um, you know, and my pictures of my actual runs are on my Instagram page. So if you want to check them out, you'll see them there. They show the amount of time that it took me and how many Ks I, I jogged. Uh, and my average pace. But so I am going off the top of my head and, um, you know, don't correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think it was 44 or 45 minutes the first 5K I did. Uh, and I've gotten that down to 42 or 41. And I think the average pace on the 10K was the best one. Um, you know, that translated down to about 41, between 40 and 41 minutes. So, you know, my, my goal really was first of all, to, to improve the amount of uh, time on the course that I could jog before having to take a walking break and catch my breath, uh, but also my overall time, which is fundamentally the same thing. It's a different way of measuring the same thing. Um, be self-competitive is my advice. You know, I, I'm not setting out there to beat anyone's records. Uh, I'm never gonna be an Olympic runner, don't wanna be, but I'm trying to beat my own record. Now, on most days, that record is how long it takes me to complete the course, um, it could also be, you know, how far I can run on a particular, you know, straight portion of the, of the circuit, uh, before I have to slow down. Um, or it could just be to get out there how many days in a row I can get out there. So I'm up to nine. Um, but be self-competitive is my advice. You know, I, I personally find that to be quite motivating. If you're the sort of person that, that is competitive against other people, um, you know, maybe find a way to do that. I know that, uh, I th Strava is a, is a running app that will actually give you, a bunch of common tracks or at least portions um, uh, between point A and B that might be on your track and it will it will track your time against anyone else with the Strava app that uses that same portion of, of roads. So, uh, you know, if you're the sort of person that likes to compete with others, maybe that's a, that's a good app for you to check out. Uh, I haven't actually used it. I use Nike Run Club, which we'll get to in a sec. Um, the other thing is track everything. So, you know, if you want to see progress, if you're motivated by week on week progress, then you need to track how you're progressing. Now, for me, that takes the form of an Apple Watch. Um, you could just as easily use, a, you know, when any one of a number of GPS running watches. Um, you know, Garmin makes some, TomTom Tom makes some, there's a whole bunch. Um, even if you don't want to go out and spend the money, just just uh, a stopwatch in your pocket, maybe not your pocket, but maybe start wherever you're starting hit a stopwatch and, and if you do a round circuit where you end where you started, maybe turn that stopwatch off and you'll have a rough time as to how long it took you to complete the circuit and try and improve every day. Maybe write down what it, you know what your times were. But 
whatever you do, I, my advice is track the statistics associated with your run so that you can see week on week progress or day on day progress so that you can identify where you're struggling and maybe focus on those areas. So if you're struggling to run uphill, um, maybe walk before the hill and walk after the hill and focus a lot of your energy and attention in running up that hill. Um, interestingly though, I've actually found I get more pain. I think most people get more pain running downhill than uphill. So it's more energy to run uphill, but it's more muscle, muscle pain to run downhill. So, you know, there's lots of different areas where you could work on self-improvement um, if you track. The other piece of it, the other tip I've picked up is slow down, pace yourself. You are not there to run the whole course the first time you set out to do it. Realistically, you're probably not gonna run the, the whole course the 20th time you do it. So slow down. The goal, at least for me, my goal is jog as slow as, as possible whilst still being a jog um, until I can jog the entire course. Then I'll worry about how fast. What I do notice is I have to consciously slow my jog down because I feel a bit silly. I'm, I'm jogging really slowly. It's almost a walk, um, but it's kind of one step up from a power walk. Really, you know, in order to maximize the fat burning, your, the fat burning benefit you're getting out of cardio, you really want to figure out what your maximum heart rate is. And there is a calculation. I think it's, don't quote me. I will, I, I might throw it up on the screen actually, but I found a calculation that estimated your maximum heart rate. And I think for a man, it was um, 180 minus your age. No, that can't be right. It must be 220 minus your age. I'll throw it up on the screen, but I'm pretty sure that was, that's what it was. Um, so that gives you an es estimated maximum heart rate. And really to maximize the amount of energy that you're, or the amount of fat that you're burning, you don't want to go too high. If you, if you are pushing yourself too close to your maximum heart rate, your body starts dig digging into uh, muscle tissue to grab energy to, to um, provide you with that immediate burst. If you don't run fast enough, if you walk, uh, it will tend to burn glucose rather than fat. Um, really, you want to sit in the, in, the, in the fat burning zone, people call it, and which is about 60 to 80% of your heart rate maximum. So uh, that, that's one other tip. Slow down. You know, you want to track your heart rate. If you've got a heart rate monitor with you, I use my Apple Watch. Uh, and just monitor your heart rate and make sure it kind of sits in that pocket. And trust me, it's a, you know, 60, 80% of your maximum. It's very easy to get into that 60% um, zone. And um, it's a wide zone. So it's actually not that hard to make sure that the entire run, um, you're in that fat burning zone. Um, just a couple more topics before we, we close out, because I don't want the video to be too long. Um, I've noticed that gear is extremely important. You know, I um, did a little bit of jogging in December um, before I really started all this stuff, actually. Uh, and I went through three pairs of shoes. Um, I had the, and I'm going to drop some names because I specifically went out of my way to, to find shoes that were comfortable. I tried the Nike uh, Lunar Glide because I liked them. I liked the look of them. Big mistake when picking shoes. Uh, I picked the, I then went to the Nike structure because I discovered that I overpronate. Um, basically it's a, it's a measure of a, well, it's a type of walking gait that requires a lot of support um, so that when your foot lands and lifts again, your your body is following a, a, a good motion uh, that minimizes injury and minimizes pain. So I, so I went to the Nike structure in the hopes that that would help. I think it was the structure 18 or the structure 19. Uh, and I got lots and lots of pain on the outside of the top of my foot, um, just near where the tongue sits actually, but on the outsides. And it didn't matter what I did with the laces. I tried alternate lacing, alternate lacing them. I've, uh, you know, I Googled some alternate patterns for lace, lacing, something I never thought I'd look up. Um, and that gave me a little bit of relief, but it was still so painful that it was stopping me from running, not because I was out of breath or because my muscles hurt, but because my feet hurt. So I went to a proper running shoe store and had them fit me. They recorded my walking motion. Um, told me that I was a very extreme overpronator and I have extra wide feet. So they're not particularly big, I'm a size 11 uh, in Australia, but um, they're quite wide. So I ended up being fitted for a Brooks, um, I can't remember the specific shoe, I might throw it up on the screen, uh, but it was a Brooks branded shoe, it was a wide fit, and it has a hell of a lot of support for an overpronator. So shoes are extremely important. Without those shoes, I cannot run more than a K. Um, certainly not comfortably. I've found clothes are important. You know, make sure you've got, um, uh, well, my advice is don't run in a cotton shirt, 
find a synthetic like a, a you know like a brand name running shirt i know it sounds gimpy for some people that hate that sort of stuff um fine but but i found active wear when active is actually really important for comfort i will only wear synthetic underwear when running Otherwise I get chafing. I'm a bigger guy. Um, I'm certainly, you know, guy, it's not just specifically uh, guys, it's it's more my thighs. Uh, and, and certainly less so these days now that I've dropped a lot of weight. But if I if I do too much exercise and start to get hot and sweaty, um, the, the parts of my body that rub together will certainly, you know, certainly did chafe. So I only wear synthetic underpants. I only wear dry fit or that type of, um, you know, sweat wicking socks, if not synthetic socks. And most of my running gear now is completely synthetic. So my, my shorts and my, my long sleeve and short sleeve shirts. Um, but you know, it's really important to be comfortable when you're running. Uh, and the last piece of gear that I wanted to cover, um, is something that I found accidentally a, um, a long, long time ago. I bought it, uh, I think I bought bought it for a girlfriend as well or, um, because she was doing a lot of exercise and it's called the flip belt. I'll hold it up now. Unfortunately, I have to hold it up a, against my eyes or else the focus on the camera won't work. But um, so this is the flip belt. It's basically a, a loop of Lycra. You need to pick the right size um, and it basically has, it fits around your waist, fits over your clothes around your waist, typically under your shirt, but over your, uh, over your pants. And it's got these pockets and these pockets are the perfect size for a phone, um, for, you know, whatever else you need to carry when you, when you're running, um, you can actually turn the whole thing. Now the flip belt logo itself is actually, um, uh, reflective. So it's a, a little bit of extra safety. And one of the most important features is inside this pocket, you've got a key holder. So I find that if I put my keys on that hook uh, and throw it inside the pocket, my keys will not move the whole time. Now this will fit an iPhone plus in it. So if you're a large, um, you know, Android or iPhone user, this belt's perfect. Uh, there's pockets at the back, there's a big pocket at the back and there's two pockets at the front. But I find that if I put my gear in this, um, it will not move the whole trip or the whole run. Now that's really important because obviously you need need to be able to get back into your house or your car. Um, I've got a lot of running pants that don't have pockets. I know women have that problem a hell of a lot more than men, um, but even the pants that I have that do have pockets, I wouldn't put a pair of keys in and run. I'll end up losing them and having to backtrack. Certainly my phone would bounce out of my pocket. So the flip belt is brilliant. Um, I've actually got a later one. The, the new ones now have zips, I think at the front pocket, but not at the back. Um, I'll have to dig it up. It's somewhere in the house. It's it's buried in the, the mess. Um, and you can now get uh, water bottles. They're quite small, um, but they're water bottles that are that have a curve that's designed to fit on your back in the flip belt pocket, um, which is a cool idea. I haven't got them, but um, you know, it might be something I check out if I start doing a half marathon or a marathon, if I go that crazy. But um, yeah, flip belt, my advice, jump online. Um, they're not that expensive. They come in a range of colors. Um, you know, it's, it's just a really practical way to carry your gear without putting your phone on, on an armband, which I see people doing, and I just feel sorry for them, man. There's no way that's comfortable. Uh, anyway, um, you know, there's lots of other gear, sunglasses and earphones, and I find wireless earphones are a godsend. I use my AirPods, but you know, the, the, the sky's the limit, but the, the key things are comfortable shoes, um, comfortable clothes. And for me, the flip belt, I think is invaluable. I, I wouldn't jog without it, to be frank. Um, now, last topic before I, I let you go, because I don't want this to be too long and I think it's kind of already getting that way. Nike Run Club. Now, I bitched about this on Instagram a few times, um, just to give you some context. I am I was trying to use the Night The Night Run Club is a app on iOS or Android designed to track your running. Um, if you've got a heart rate monitor that's compatible like the Apple Watch, like a range of others, like the TomTom Tom and Garmin's are all compatible with the app on your phone. Um, you know, the phone will track your pace, your total distance, your heart rate over time. It will, um, if it's attached to a GPS device, it will give you a map of your run. Um, you know, and it will analyze, it'll gather statistics and display them to you over time. So you can compare how you went to the run last week. You can track your total distance travel. You can track, um, you can tell it what shoes you were wearing while you did the run. Um, and it will track your total kilometers on your shoes. So, you know, when to replace them. Um, it'll track, uh, you know, it'll ask you how much effort you expend, so you can expend it on a run. So you can kind of track a whole bunch of data. Now, Nike Run Club is certainly not the only app. There are other apps like uh, Runkeeper. Um, there's, I think Run 
run coop yeah uh strava which is a running and cycling app there's uh zombies run which is a you know they've kind of gamified running which i'm actually keen to check out at some point there's like 20 apps or there's probably more but i stick to nike run club for a few reasons i just find that it's achievement system is motivating for me you know to know that i you know i picked up um a challenge on monday last uh, mon yeah monday so a week ago i picked up a challenge run 15 kilometers in the week i smashed that challenge in like day three um that felt really good it, it motivated me to, to jump onto the next challenge which is run 50 kilometers in the month of may well, I've now achieved that and, and I've still got um, three or four days left in May. Um, now there is one for a hundred kilometers in May, which obviously, you know, starting in the last week of May, that was never gonna happen, particularly for someone like me. Um, but I find that type of stuff, it also tracks your fastest run, your furthest run, your best average pace per kilometer. You know, you, there's, a whole, there's a whole achievement system. And then you also have running levels where it unlocks different background colors for the app you know, based on total distance that you've traveled inside the app. So that's why I persevere when I have, when I have had all of these dramas with the app. Now the dramas, I've got an Apple watch with the Nike run app integrated into it. I have an Apple phone with the Nike run, Nike run club app integrated into it. I have had no end of issues. All I expect to do is to open the app on my phone and my watch start the run on my phone and finish the run on my phone, um, have it play music, uh, and play a playlist that I've selected. And then when I, in the midst of my run, cause fundamentally you're pressing, you know, start on your phone, you're putting it in your flip belt or your pocket and you're taking off and you won't look at your phone again. Um, you expect it to play music. You expect it to auto pause. If you have to stop at a set of lights and then auto start. So it doesn't screw up your stats. But I expect that since the app is also installed on my on my watch and it's supposed to be integrated, I can look at my watch and it will tell me my current pace, my current distance, my current heart rate. That's all I expect. When I get back, I still stop the run from my phone and I expect it to give me the total stats and a map of the route that I took. Apparently that's too hard about 50% of the time. And I mean 50% of the time, my expectations aren't unreasonable. It did actually do exactly what I just described half of the time that I did it, that I, that I used the app. The other half, something would go wrong. I would look at my watch and it would say, are you ready to run today? Well, I'm already running. It's already started on my phone. What the hell? Um, I've had the watch give me stats that were from five minutes ago on my phone. So I actually got my phone out and it says, you've been running for 15 minutes on your, on my phone and you've been running for 10 minutes on your watch. Heart rate stats are out. Um, you know, in the end, I thought maybe it's because I'm trying to do too much. So I tried starting the run from my watch and finishing it on the watch, same issues. Just random shit goes wrong. That's what the issues are. They're just intermittent random shit. Um, I've tried starting it on my phone, finishing it on my phone. I've started starting it on my phone, finishing it on my watch and vice versa. I've tried all these different combinations and permutations. So. I decided to go out and buy an Apple Watch 3, and to be honest, it was an excuse to buy a watch, but I was trying to hold out for the next version, which should be in a few months, um, in the hopes that I could leave my phone at home. The Apple Watch 3 allows me to make cellular calls, cellular calls, so if I, if I get into trouble, I've got a mobile phone with me in my watch. Um, it's got GPS, it's got elevation tracking, it's got everything that my iPhone has essentially. So the idea was leave my phone at home and I won't have these cross talk issues between the, the watch and the phone. Now I have, I have to say uh, in the last four days I've been using just the Apple Watch 3, it's been better. Except on two of my runs, it hasn't tracked my, my GPS. So it's given me total distance and time. It's obviously used GPS while I've been running, but when I finished the run, there was no map. So um, it's just disappointingly stupid how there could be, you know, one of the largest sports companies on this planet can't get a basic phone app right. If you look on the internet, you will find a bazillion problems and a bazillion people complaining about it. But like I said, I persevere because I find that the app when it works is super motivating for me. Anyway, I know that's a really long video and I am sorry for that. Uh, you know, it's a pretty big topic. It's, a, it's, it's an important one, I think. Um, but that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. 
Uh, hopefully you found this, this video interesting and useful. Um, if you have, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see uh, weight, weight loss videos released every Tuesday, um, most Tuesdays. I've been a bit uh, all over the place lately, so there have been a couple that have been delayed by a day or two, but, but I, I aim to release videos every Tuesday and certainly every week. Um, so yeah, if you liked the video, if you got um, got some use out of it, hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what your cardio of choice is and why you've chosen it. Um, you know, I'm not married to running, so I'm certainly interested to find out what uh, what cardio works for you and, and maybe it'll convince me to, to try something different as well. Uh, and if you do run, what apps do you use to track your progress? Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next Tuesday.